Good evening from Johannesburg. I'm Adam Stritz. This is Let's Have It Out. While I will be your host for tonight's show, my job in the world out there is that of Deputy CEO of the Civil Rights Group AfriForum, a non-governmental organization that strives to protect the rights of minority communities outside of the sphere of party politics. While the organization adheres to a strict policy of non-partisanship when it comes to political parties, we know that the Democratic Alliance, South Africa's official opposition, has traditionally received substantial support from minority communities. It appears, however, that there's been a shift in the DA's approach and strategy in South African politics. The party aims to become the government, and of course, in order to achieve this, the party is clearly focused on increasing its support among black voters. On the other hand, traditional DA supporters, or at least some of them, have be seem to have become uncomfortable with the party's new position, and some claim that the party has undergone an ideological metamorphosis and are compromising on its principles or that they do not know what the principles are anymore. The DA has taken strong positions on controversial topics such as black economic empowerment, land reform, racism, and even white privilege, leading some to dub the party the ANC light. In tonight's show, we will unpack what the DA's position is, how the DA regards this perceived shift in principles, and what the DA's view is on the balance between protecting minority rights and obtaining majority support. This is Let's Have It Out. You can have your say, and here's how. Tweet us at ENCA using the hashtag LHIO. Call us on 011-759-6340. Or send us a WhatsApp or WhatsApp video on 082-884-6370. And make sure those videos are no longer than 30 seconds, please. To discuss these issues with me is our special guest tonight, Gwen Nguenya. Nguenya is a member of parliament and also the head of policy for the Democratic Alliance. Gwen, thank you very much. Good thank to have you here. Um, I'm sure you have a lot to say just based on that introduction <laughs> already. Yeah. Um, but before we go into the questions, perhaps I should say that I'm very grateful to have you here. Firstly, because you are uh, the head of policy at the DA, but also because I believe that you are very well equipped to, to answer these questions. So there are a few questions that I would like to discuss with you in a, in a collegial manner. And the first is maybe linking to that introduction. The, the leader of the Democratic Party, uh, or Democratic Alliance, sorry, recently said that if a white person and a black person are equally qualified for a position, then preferential treatment should be given to the black person, effectively saying that within those circumstances, those people should not be judged by the content of their character, but by the color of their skin. And now there are people claiming that the DA is, is sort of uh, parroting the ANC line and becoming an ANC light. What is your view on that? Well, I think perhaps, I mean, that's always the ideal scenario that people who want to advance um, the advancement of those who've been previously disadvantaged say. However, I think in practice, um, one very rarely ever sees a scenario where two people are completely identical. So I think in practice, you'd probably find that there'd still be great scope for adjudicating people based on their experience, their skill sets, and also their potential. And I think the emphasis there where the DA has said that we want to make sure that people who are previously disadvantaged um, get, get opportunities is to really recognize potential. Um, so it's not so much to recognize the racial differences between those two candidates, but it is to recognize that, for example, somebody who's gone to a lower quintile school, who comes from a background where perhaps their, their parents did not have an education, and has actually managed to achieve on paper the same kind of you know, education or skill set as somebody else, that you do want to recognize the potential that person has to have achieved so much at, um, you know, despite the difficult life conditions they've had. Mm. So it's really about recognizing, I'd say, potential as opposed to recognizing people's race. Okay. So the DA is a political party and the DA wants to win the election. I think that's a natural goal for any political party. And to do that, you need to have a particular strategy. And, and the, the challenge with strategy is not so much what do you do, it's rather what do you stop doing. Yes. So my question then is, which of these two are more likely, in your view, that, that the DA would be prepared 
to sacrifice uh, votes in order to maintain its principles or that the DA would be prepared to sacrifice its principles in order to get more votes? Well, I'm, I'm not sure as well. I think maybe we sometimes draw false dichotomies. I don't know how many, in how many instances that would be necessarily the clean-cut choice between a sacrifice of principle and, a, um, and, and, and rather to, to win votes. The, the better reality is rather that any political party that sees itself or aspires to have any kind of degree of depth recognizes that you must have a position on the issues that matter to different groups of people. And so, you know, it's important to be able to communicate that. And whilst perhaps, you know, in the past, you may have been quite comfortable communicating to those whose votes you know were already guaranteed, now you have to look a little bit broader and make sure that you're touching on the pain points of perhaps groups that weren't traditionally part of your voting base. Mm. And, and also, I, I want to make clear that when I say, or, or when I talk at least about the, the DA's traditional voter base, it's probably different to when other people talk about the DA's traditional voter base. In my view, the DA's traditional voters are not white South Africans. That's incorrect. The DA's traditional voters are liberal South Africans, people who buy into the idea of the sanctity of the individual because it's actually from individual rights, it's from the individual that group and other rights actually flow, that group and minority rights flow. The recognition that the private sector and private property is very important to the advancement of people in the country and that must be the front line of economic growth and economic inclusion. Mm -hmm. And also from a more political governance sense, recognizing that a federalized system of government is preferable and that's why our commitment to city led growth is going to be a lot stronger going into this election. Yeah. So it's people who bind to that broad set of values who traditionally voted for the DA. Yes. But now as the party grows, you might start to um, you know, obviously attract people who rather join the DA because they are anti another party as opposed to for something. And it's going to be our hard mission to inform people that, yes, you've joined us because you're anti something, but actually we, we stand for something as well. Yeah. And it needs to be a continuous program of education about what the party stands for as well. So, so I want to link to that because I, I agree it, it, it essentially it is about liberal about liberalism so if you read the biographies of Tony Leon and Helen Zeland if you listen to what Musi Maimane is saying it's always the, the, the DA is is portrayed as a party of small government which is a liberal principle but for example in 2016 the DA had distributed a pamphlet saying that the ANC has spent 140 billion on social grants but the DA would spend 143 billion so Looking at some of the re more recent statements made by leaders within the DA on things like social grants or BEE or government regulation, um, even regulation of social issues. Uh, there was a recent, uh, I think just a few days ago, a, a statement that people in Cape Town have to register to put up solar panels. So these are all big government um, uh, views. So is the DA still a party of small government or is it being transformed into a big government more uh, aligned with the ANC type of approach? Well, you see, for me, it's not, sometimes these questions are a little bit like politics 101, you know. I think once you're actually in, in government or in politics, it's not so much about whether you're for big government or small government, um, because it's kind of also like the taxation issue, right? It's mm -hmm. the question anymore doesn't become whether or not uh, people must be taxed or not taxed, unless, of course, maybe you lie on the sort of anarchist end of this, this, yeah. the spectrum. But most people think there should be some form of taxation, and the debate lies around just how, you know, around the appropriate level. Mm -hmm. So. So similarly, when we're talking about government, I'm not so much concerned about whether it's a big government or small government, but whether government is operating in the appropriate spaces for government to, 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 to operate. So does government have a legitimate role to play in X area? So for example, if I hone down on social welfare or social grants, I'd say that's imperative that we support the most vulnerable people in society. Um, and I think that you cannot speak of meaningful um, you know, political freedoms without meaningful economic freedom. Um, but in that sense, um, my view would be that you want to ha make sure that you provide the best care for the lowest number of people as possible. So my concern, if I was in government, wouldn't be so much whether we're spending more on social grants, but rather are we providing social grants, better social grants, to fewer people. And it must never be a point of success to say, well, the number of, econo of, of social grant beneficiaries have increased. Yeah. That's a failure. There should be fewer people, but if we can provide better care for fewer people, then that will be a success. Yeah. So, so we'll unpack that after the break. Uh, after the break, we continue our conversation. Remember that you can be part of the conversation using the hashtag HLHIO. Hashtag LHIO.